y'all. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now, sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hello, Al. Hey, happy birthday to ya. Happy <laughs> birthday to ya. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, Claudia. Dance. Thank you. Thank you. I love the dance. <laughs> oh, you make me not. I can't wait till next year to see what dance I get next year. Please welcome Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? What's going on, Claudia? Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I'm out here in the Bahamas, and my girls, they really did a great job. I want to shout them out. Uh, Chancey, Missy, Shante and Sabrina, and I think Rod is coming down here. So thank you so much for putting this together. Today was just, we've been just having such a, a fantastic time. I'm in my bathing suit for the show. Yeah, I see you got the wet and wavy. You got the girls out. The girls, the girls are out. Yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> untouched 51 year old Tatas, untouched. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do a um, shimmy for the girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not too much now because we are PG 14 now. Okay. Anybody else have any plans for the weekend? I'll be here gambling, drinking, laying out. Yeah. No forward. plans. I'll be in Los Angeles. I get to spend a weekend in Los Angeles finally, so I'm looking forward to that because the weather's looking pretty good. Okay, Armand? Yeah, I'm supposed to be going to Universal Studios with my family. They're coming into town. However, it looks like it might be some rain Saturday, so I'm hoping we don't get rained out because I'm really looking forward to seeing them. I haven't seen them in a long time, so they're coming from up north, so I'm hoping that we don't get rained out. That should be fun. All right. Okay. Are y'all drinking tonight or no? Am I the only hot one? Hot tea. I'm drinking hot tea tonight. I'm drinking hot tea tonight. I'm doing some hot water. Hot water, <laughs> hot water. Well, I'm drinking for the three of us tonight. How about uh, that? You, you should. All right, everybody. Before we jump into the topics, tonight is a special show because we're celebrating Claudia's birthday. Woo! Okay. So, so face, make sure you... We're going to celebrate. <laughs> so soulmates make sure you drop some birthday cakes for claudia in the chat and claudia how are you feeling tonight you're one year more around the sun i mean do you feel any different i feel just as twisted as i was last year <laughs> <laughs> were you in the bahamas last year or were you in in where were you last year? Last year was Aruba and like 17, 18 of my people came out. It was a really good time. And, you know, I knew it was special. So I, I really appreciate them making that trip this year. You know what? I did say I claimed 50 as my best year and was my absolute best year of my life. Career wise, right. just friends, experiences. It was a year that I stepped away from relationships and love and all that. I just was very clear and focused. And like a lot of stuff just got, you know, dropped into my lap, opportunities. And um, I don't want to keep this streak going that much longer, but it has been beneficial. So I'm I'm in a really good place. I'm, I'm very, very happy in my life right now. Very happy. Very cool, Claudia. Well, it's only right that we kick off the show by showing you some love. And we're going to start with Armand. Yes, I just think that, you know, what you've been able to do is super amazing. I mean, you look amazing. You know, a lot of people in my family are fans of you. And to keep that vibrant personality and that work ethic, yeah, hey, Dad, and that work ethic that you have is admirable, you know. And for you to be turning, you know, 51, I think that you, you're still grinding and you're showing a lot of people like myself that the grind never stops, especially in this entertainment business, because a lot of times we think that, you know, you cap out at a certain age and you are showing people girls men gays all of us alike that you can still keep working so i think that that's very admirable about you and you know congratulations on everything and all of your success and you know happy birthday do your you I, I appreciate that and i hope people see that like it doesn't matter when you start you know and and, and against the odds people can say whatever they want but you can if you have that grind and you you have a love for it Keep it going. So thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Well, Claudia, you know, I've known you for quite some time. So I decided I wanted to write you a poem for oh your birthday. God. All oh. right, here we go. Well, this is In so the nice. spotlight's gentle sway, she stands, a beauty timeless with grace at hand. 51 years, a journey spun with gold. 30 in the limelight, so many stories untold. Her laughter echoes through the bustling crowd, yet beneath her smile, a whisper shroud. For love's elusive dance, she yearns to find, but fate's cruel jest seems unkind. In the mirror's gaze, line of wisdom trace, each crease a tale, a moment's embrace. Yet still her heart beats with hopeful plea, for love that sees beyond the surface plea. 
Through the lens of fame, she's known by all, yet in solitude's embrace, she feels small. But in her soul, a strength does rise, for she knows love's worth beyond disguise. So here's to her, a woman of might, in her quest for love, she'll find her light. For age is but a number and time a friend. In the end, true love will mend. I wish you that for your 51st birthday. Hey. You, but I don't want a man right now. <laughs> I don't trust y'all. I'm sick of y'all. Oh, no, come, come on, come on, come on. been lying for 40 years to me. I'm good where I'm at. Leave me alone. I am <laughs> you're, you're your cats. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I swear I'm good. I have nobody yeah, stussy son stressing me out right now. <laughs> you feeling the love, Claudia? I mean, after that suicide letter, yes. I <laughs> <laughs> that's not a suicide letter it was, was great a... that it was like it was like you're beautiful you're this but love has invaded her since <laughs> Why don't you well, they told us that? they told us they Let told us that we're they told us that we were supposed to be shady too in our mind he came with this gusher like there's no shade in anything he said i wrote this poem i stayed up all night writing a shady poem but giving love and this is what happens no you're i still love like, you thank, you know thank, thank you thank you that was very very sweet and very unexpected, and thank you. I always, yes, you gave me spoken word. Spoken word, spoken word. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get into these topics. During a recent interview on the uh, Terraman Hall show, Eva Marcel addressed the rumors surrounding her weight loss. Eva shared that her divorce played a major factor in her weight loss and revealed the process felt as if she had caught the stomach flu. What are your thoughts on Eva putting uh, these rumors to rest, and how do you guys navigate through your posts breakups uh let's go to you al go ahead well you know i really enjoyed the vulnerability of this and i enjoyed her sharing it um but i don't know something about this conversation with her did still make me feel uncomfortable now um i do know just from personal um experience that depression can you know cause depression anxiety and stress can cause stomach issues I, that's how i developed mild to moderate Crohn's disease and i too lost in excess of 20 pounds so i totally get it i like the fact that she wasn't grammar uh, you know glamorizing the weight loss and she put a reason to it and so that i can respect so nothing but love and hopefully healing for ava Eva. Right. Now, Eva tied the knot with her now ex-husband, Michael Sterling, back in 2018 and filed for divorce in March of 2023. So about a year ago. Armand, what do you think? I'm going to be honest with you. I love Eva. She's one of my favorite people, one of my favorite stars to watch. I'm a super fan. I think she can do no wrong. She's beautiful um, and amazingly talented. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. Something doesn't feel right here. I don't feel like this was this significant weight loss was just strictly due to depression however or, or the divorce however i do feel like you know these days you know people want to keep their sicknesses or other ailments to themselves i'm not saying that she's sick but to me i just feel like there's something else underlying going on possibly and maybe she's just not really you know ready to talk about it but one thing i can say it does feel like whatever it is whether it's the, the, the breakup or you know underlining health issues she seems to have a uh, better control over it because she's talking about it you know so i just hope the best for her and if it was due to the breakup and depression i'd most rather it be that than something health-wise, because I want her to be around for a long time. She's one of the, the greats. So shout out to Eva. The very beautiful Eva Marcel. I assume that like most of us, the people, she was on Olympic. That's what I thought. And some people that I'm mm. friends with, they got on it. And when they got off it, their body just continued to lose a massive amounts of weight and they, they couldn't really stop it. I guess mm. I, I, did that kind. I got the kind where you gain it back and then you got to get back. <laughs> um, but she, yeah, that's what I assumed. Um, but I didn't even think about that, that there could be some depression, because I'm sure we've all been through depression. Mm -hmm. Al, you said you lost 20. I think I lost 18 pounds in one month. And that looks very drastic when they, you know, 20 pounds will make a huge difference on a small frame as well. So mm. hopefully it's not. I, I, I don't know. But hopefully she's feeling a lot better. And I'll tell you one thing. Curves, no curves, skinny, thick, that face. That it's face everything. is never defined. That face is yeah. absolute perfection. She is a beautiful woman. All right, in the news of sounds about white, Tori Spelling shared that she hadn't popped, pooped, or peed alone in the 18 years that she was married to her ex-husband, now ex-husband, Dean McDermott. Uh, the mother of five revealed that since her split, she now goes to the bathroom in front of her kids. What are your thoughts on this story? And do you think this is an inappropriate, Al? 
You know what? I, am I the only one who finds her, her parents, and her family weirder than I ever thought they would be? Now, this show, she became really famous in my generation. And I thought, you know, that she was a part of Hollywood royalty, given what her father does, given what her mother's philanthropic outreach, you know, their 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 respect in Hollywood. So I, I just find, like, as things have started to unveil about her not getting her parents' money, her mother still having the money, she's going through all these issues, going through divorce, it just gets weird weirder and weirder for me. And and to be honest, she could have kept this to herself because this even makes me think that they're even weirder than I thought before that she shared this. So she could have kept this to herself, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Armand, what do you think? So let me get this straight. So you're, you had some bad McDonald's. You got diarrhea. You got to go take a number two, an explosive one. And you got to say, hey, Johnny, hey, Kate, come upstairs and watch mommy blow a load. No, Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. I'm not standing. First of all, when I go to the bathroom, I need to take everything off and I need to be comfortable. And sometimes I might need to squat, stand on the seat. I don't need you talking to me. I need full concentration. And if I'm the child, I'm not standing there watching you go through that. And I don't want to smell it. You know, so I don't understand what these, you know, white people are doing, these clear people are doing in Hollywood. It seems to be a going trend where everyone is naked in the bathroom, having conversations, casually taking a SHI, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the whole family, it's like a family gathering. You know, everybody sits around the toilet and watch you do number two. It's a little weird for me. I'm not here for it. And I'm just glad that black people aren't jumping on this bandwagon. Mm. Bring back shame. No one's embarrassed to say anything. You just say whatever. I remember a time when people used to say, excuse me, after they burped, they would try their best not to pass gas around people. And they definitely didn't have the door open when they were in the bathroom, much less force your kids or husband to sit there while you relieve yourself. What is wrong with you? Even my cats don't like use a little box in front of people. Like they want some privacy. I don't get this, Tori. <laughs> and I used to feel bad for you. Like, damn, that's messed up her dad, her rich father. Didn't want to really leave her no money and stuff. And now the more you talk, the more I see why he wanted to give it to anybody but you. Because <laughs> if my daughter was insisting I'd be in the bathroom with her all those years, I would not leave you any money for forcing me to smell your gases for all those years. I think that's really weird. And you're traumatizing your kids. That's not normal, lady. No. It's that's Isn't disgusting. she the only child? Mom said she does it in front of her. Oh, I don't know. No, she's, she's the only child, right? I think she's the only child. They only had one child, so that's even worse. Wait, please. We don't need to know these things. Like, this is just, like I said, when people get boring, they want to come up with something that gets them on TGIF, because why else would we be talking about this? Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, coming up next, a woman who confronted her baby's father's wife and later find out how a dose of eye drops led to a friend's death. Oh, my God. Keep it here. We'll be right back. Ooh. One, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yes. If it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. Oh, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. 
Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. Now, for those who are just tuning in, it's airy season and we are celebrating my 51st birthday. And uh, should I be nervous now? <laughs> Claudia, now wait. Before we continue with the show, what's a good celebration without a special TGIF roast? All right. Are y'all ready for Claudia's birthday roasting by Armand? Here we go. Uh oh. All right, we're gonna let Amon kick us off. Let's go, cue the music. Uh, oh, Claudia, the ultimate multitasker. I would have dialed your number to wish you a happy birthday. Honestly, I would have. But I know you're just so busy managing your Hollywood empire, you know, all those movie sets and TV shows and whatnot. It's impressive how you're always on set, but somehow managed to be on every social media platform, commenting faster than lightning on every post that pops up. I guess your phone only rings for people you like. I get it. I wasn't your choice. <laughs> but thanks for keeping me on red while you dominate the comment section. Here's to another year of dodging my phone calls and conquering timelines. Happy birthday to the social media comic queen. Oh, my God. Is that you texting me? I don't have you saved. <laughs> that was fun. Way to go, Armand. Cody, did you... What did you think of the birthday roast? That was very cute. I love a little cute little roast, a little little bit of train. Because guess what? Aries, our, our favorite thing is, oh yeah, you a root? I'm next. I can't wait. When's your birthday, Armand? June 3rd. I know okay. I'm next. I know I'm next. Well, I'll save your number on my phone. I'll put your birthday in there. Okay. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the love and the hate. I think it was really cute. <laughs> all the fun, you guys. Don't start nothing. Yeah. That was all the fun. Yeah, that was a double the joke. <laughs> All right, let's get back to some more topics. A woman recently confronted her baby father's wife after she reportedly disciplined her daughter. Check this out. And I gave I'm her only right here, to. though, and she's under my authority at the time. She should be listening, don't okay. you think? I'm and not saying she should not listen, but let me tell you something. This is my daughter. I don't want you touching her. That's okay. point blank, period. And, and if she so comes back to me... coming over here because if she's going to be disrespectful and cross the line... Okay, well, why are you not being a daddy and checking her then and making sure that she's respecting her? Because you just told me that you weren't here when it happened. So if you're not here when it happened... she tell you that daddy whooped me? Because I do. If she's disrespectful in my house, she's going to get punished. She told me that... Daddy's new no girlfriend who, touched me. That's what she told me. Ain't new about she... Ooh, what's your take on this situation? And do you think the stepmother was out of line, Oman? Uh, I'm torn on this because, you know, I've grown up with step parents. Um, it's, 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 it's a sticky situation because on one hand, don't touch my child. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if I'm the step parent in the situation, don't send your kid over here if your kid is is not well behaved. And if I'm the only one watching them, they're going to need to be disciplined. So, you know, I may need to pop them here and there. But I think it needs to be a situation if the, if the step parent is going to be allowed to put hands on the child, it needs to be shown that there's a mutual respect and there's a genuine love for that child. If you just get into a relationship and there's no real bond from that step parent to that child, I don't think they, sh they should be disciplining them because sometimes a lot of step parents can be evil. You know what I mean? They can be very nasty people to children that are not their own. So I just think that the level of love from the child to the, I mean, from the step parent to the child needs to be shown and needs to be clear and needs to be felt before they start, you know, kind of disciplining them with putting their hands on them. But I don't disagree with it. I just think there needs to be some time before it, it starts to happen. All right. Al, what do you think? Well, you know, where I come from and how I was raised, any child in an adult's care, especially in their house, enjoying their electricity, their food, their shelter, and their internet, you have to abide by their house rules. Um, you have to abide by the rules of the man of the house, man of the house and the woman of the house. Now, she, from what I understand, she got permission from her husband to discipline the child, and and she disciplined the child. Now, do I think the two of them, the 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 a biological, the real mother and the stepmother, need to have a conversation about moving forward, how they're going to handle discipline? Absolutely. But where is the day that when a child is in the presence of an adult? 
adult, they listen to that adult. They pay attention to that adult, especially if she's providing child care for her. Okay, I think this is a problem because the, the baby mother and the new woman are not, they don't get along. I think if they got along, a lot of the stuff would be understandable. I think both women, if they're mo mothers, they know what it feels. They know, like, okay, you're in my care. I need to be able to check you when you're acting up. Um, I, I do believe in that. But I feel like because the mother and the stepmother have such uh, a bad relationship, so that's going to unfortunately have to be the, on the man in the middle and get them on a place where they can kind of at least get along or to a better understanding, like, look, I'm not trying to step on your toes, but, you know, I want you to, we, we need to have a relationship. They need a relationship so they can communicate better for the sake of that child. And that man got to step in. He needs to be arguing or front and center, not the two women. He needs to be the one because he's attached to both of them, my opinion. All right, NBA player Devin Booker is clapping back after fans insinuated that he's rocking a hair unit. Now, the rumors started to buzz after a video of an alleged NBA superstar receiving a hair unit went viral. Devin reposted the video and wrote, y'all got me messed up, <laughs> lol. Now, do y'all think this person in the video resembles Devin? And would you guys be open to getting a hair unit, Al? What do you think? Um, I think I would be open to doing a hair transplant before doing a hair unit because if it's anything like a wig for the ladies, they can't breathe. And they be walking around hot <laughs> and wanting to take that wig off. So I definitely believe that I would be open to doing a hair transplant over a unit. But I'm glad we're having these conversations. This is very interesting to me that we're finally in a space because I was reading the comments. In the comments, the people were actually very supportive of the hair unit concept. And I think that's that's refreshing because when I was coming through, men who tried to do anything with their hair were talked down upon. So I'm glad to see this change in sentiment as it relates to men and their hair. All right, Armand, how about you? What do you think? Um, I've thought about doing a unit before because I always wanted like a straight line, you know what I mean? But I realized that, you know, once you start shaving it, it's harder for it to grow back, you know? So I think I would do the go to Turkey and do the transplant thing, you know, just kind of right here and fill it all out there. But as far as Devin Booker, I don't really care if he got a unit or not. But if you ask me, I looked at the pictures and I zoomed in a little bit. I don't know if I feel like his is a unit. Just because with those units, it's like a perfect straight line. You can kind of see a natural hairline on him a little bit. So I, it feels like, you know, the line is not straight enough for it to be a unit to me. But I could see the resemblance being there. But, you know, anybody that has a unit, you can tell it, it, that line is like Steve Harvey straight. It's super straight. And I just feel like on him, it was, a you know, he had a little slip up at the top in some areas. I think. <laughs> I think some real natural looking ones. My boy Janelle down in De uh, Dallas, Texas, he does them for other people, and I could even tell on some of the people because it looked he didn't make it look perfect, so it look, didn't look fake. Mm -hmm. But I will say, one of my good friends, uh, her ex, he was going to Miami to hang out with his brother and kind of be out in them streets, and he got a little unit put on for the weekend, but he didn't take it to consideration humidity and mm. weather. And that baby sweat started peeling off at the edges, and his boys no. were down. They end up snatching it off of him and filming it on the ground, and it and it ends up going real bad. If you're gonna do it, I think you gotta be careful about humidity. Maybe I don't know. The glue lifted. I don't know, but it was it wasn't a good look. And yeah, it was kind of funny. Shout wow. out to you. you know who you are. And then you know the guys, y'all gotta stop doing like the the Puerto Rican hair. You know what I mean? Like just Everybody do the regular to... kinky hair. They be trying to do the <laughs> wet and wavy hair. And it's like, you have forcey hair. Why are you trying to do this half breed hair? The texture. And then the, oh, and, the, and then, and then, and then the dreadlocks, see, it starts to get too creative and too crazy. So let the long hair go. Let the, let the mixed hair go guys. You know, go, if that's not unless you you're are. mixed, go unless with you're mixed. mixed, go with your natural texture. It's not yeah. that hard. Not that hard to match textures. I'm just saying. All right, keep it locked because coming up next, you will not believe what a woman used to use to spike her friend's drink. And later, Mendeecees is ready to walk away from marriage. Is he? We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please 
please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. (laughs) That's part of being part of the TGI family. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, you know sometimes we need a little bit of extra money. So TGIF, of course, is here to hook you up some great advice. Now, life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday the money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck and access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an uh, optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your paycheck. Now, something that unexpected comes up, got to take my, my cats, Shelly and Six, to the vet. Earning is an option. Uh, make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download the Earning app today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earning app, type in T under podcast when you sign up. It's really, it'll really help the show. And that's T under podcast. Al, I know the Earning app is a friend of yours. What do you think about it? Uh, hey, listen, when they say give you a peace of mind, it really does because can you imagine all the unexpected expenses that you have around a person's birthday, maybe a funeral or even a car repair that we just simply are not at the end, you know, to our paycheck yet? Well, this will give you a peace of mind of being able to take care of all of that and you don't have to worry about paying it back because you automatically pay it back. At when you get your paycheck. I think it's a great idea, and I wish they had it when I was in my 20s and 30s. <laughs> Tell me about it. All right, subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period. See earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Promotional considerations furnished by Earnin. All right, let's get back to some more topics. All right, fellas, let me get your thoughts on this video. Hey, Claudia, today is your special day. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. celebrating with you but I love you just the same have have an amazing birthday girl you don't look a day over 25 (laughs) thank you Selena oh my god she sounds so good thank you girl I miss working with y'all I miss the queens thank you so much and I love you that was so nice 
I'll give me. I got chills on that one. She I did too. I was like, it was so weird. I love her boy. I love yeah. it. So raspy and so mm-hmm. cool. I love Selena. Thank you, Selena Johnson. I really appreciate that. Yay. All right. It was cause a woman has been sentenced to life in prison after poisoning her friend to death with eye drops back in 2018. The suspect spiked her friend's water bottle with a lethal dose of eye drops and staged the victim's home to make it appear to be accidental or suicide. Oh, my God. What are your thoughts on the sick story? Armand, what do you think about this? You know, the more and more I see stuff like this just makes me happy that I've cut certain people out of my life. I think for me... You got to realize who's really your friend and who's just there to, you know, try to sabotage you or kill you in the end. Like, you know, it's it's a, it's an unfortunate situation. Like, why would you poison this lady, you know? And I don't know. I just think that this is a test to show, like, you got to pay attention to the people that you have around you. Because a lot of times you think that someone cares for you or they're your friend and they're really there to stab you in the back or hurt you. And it's just an unfortunate situation. It's scary. Well- the woman is also accused of stealing $300,000 mm. from her friend and spending it on miscellaneous items. Al, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, first of all, who knew that you could buy a lethal eye drop? That, that first of all, took me out. And the second thing, I'm not going to jail. I'm not going out like this for $300,000. Just not enough money for me. Sorry, I know it sounds crazy. But if I'm going to put, all, put it all on the line, I'm not doing it by killing somebody and by only getting $300,000. I think they need to drill, throw her underneath the jail, not only for being a murderer, but mostly for being a two-faced, backstabbing, bad friend, and just for being stupid and dumb. And on top of that, throw her in jail for being broke because she needed she thought death for three hundred thousand dollars was a big come up what's scary to me is how, how many people have eye drops in their bags now and like what's a lethal dose like can we be out one day and someone just goes and, and you know what i mean and that could be the yeah. end of you over eye drops i've heard this before i thought it was a rumor but that 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 is wow are we, and then it was like to try to get the money too. So it's like, it also goes to show you can't let even people know, you know, how much money you have or you're doing well because people are always plotting and it's always people that you feel like you can trust. Clearly she trusted this woman, you know, and you just can't do it anymore. The fact that be someone that's so close to you and you're just in your life thinking this person loves you, that that to me is what's really um, frightening about this story, that someone could be in a, a wolf in sheep clothing right next to you. All right, keep it locked because coming up next is Mendeecees ready to step away from marriage. And later, Zendaya gets candid about her acting regrets. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day.
Welcome back to the show. All right, y'all. In a recent episode of Love & Hip Hop, Mendeecees revealed that he's reached his breaking point in his marriage with Yandy Smith. Mendeecees said, we are in a dark place. It's been going on for a while now. If this is going to be, then you got to take it serious. If not, you got to let it go. Mendeecees also shared that it's commitment, not love, that's keeping him afloat in this marriage. What are your thoughts hmm. and have you ever experienced anything similar, Al? Oh, <coughs> Jeez, jeez, jeez. You guys know that I'm a sucker for black love. And this black love story was one that I was really on the side of. I, I really do um, admire Yandy because I just remember, I just remember the time in which when he was going to jail, the lead up to him going to jail, Yandy really took a lot of strays and she stuck by her man. And I mean, she also, you know, she made sure the kids were held down. She made sure the family was held down. She made sure the money was held down. She made sure the business was held down all while he was in prison. So I just feel like, I, I know this sounds crazy. I know, I know. But I feel like Mendici, you owe her some time to figure it out. Give her some time to figure it out unless you know, Yandy too wants out of the marriage, then that's none of my business. But just from the outside looking in, I just remember those days so vividly. And I remember her pushing through and her standing tall and being a strong black woman on all fronts for him. So I think if it's not Yandy doesn't want out of this, Mendici, come on, bro. You owe her a little bit of time to, to, to kind of figure this out because I really like you guys and you have beautiful kids and the story is amazing. All right, Armand, what do you think? I think it is going to be kind of hard for people to grasp that he's saying this and like she's trying to be too independent because, you know, she did have to carry a lot of the load, you know, while he was locked up for, was it like five years or something like that? I don't know the exact dates, but I, I feel like it was like, like five years. But um, here's the thing, though. I'm not the hugest Yandy fan. Um, so if I'm Mendici, I'm like, all right, let's get her out of here. You know what I mean? It makes it easier on everybody. You know, you don't, your mom doesn't have to deal with her anymore. And let's just be honest. Yandy does show United Fronts. Yandy does do all these things for the community. Yandy will take in, you know, your child. But Yandy does a lot of things to then go back and throw it in your face and say, look what I've done. I did this. I had to do this. I was the one that gave you this opportunity. I was the one that took the child and I was... I, I was the one that held everything down. Yandy does a lot of stuff, in my opinion, so that she can go back and say, look what I've done. And I think, you know, Mendeecee's at a point where it's like, well, girl, I don't want to deal with that no more. I don't want you giving your eggs to your sister because at the end of the day, that's not going to be your sister's baby. That's going to be your baby. And I don't want that to happen. And Yandy, you can't just give your sister one of your eggs without your husband's consent, I feel like. I feel like that's the wrong thing to do. And I don't care if they're your eggs or not, and that's your sister. If your husband doesn't want you to do that, that's just something simply he's not comfortable with. And I feel like, Yandy, just because you've held him down, you can't just keep making decisions as if you're single. If you want to continue to do that, then be single, period. I think um, I agree with your point on the, uh, giving the eggs to the sister without your husband's you know, knowledge. I think that that's something that you should talk about with your partner. I will say that. But I also will, was looking at it a little differently as far as like a lot of times if a woman's not like including you in a lot of situations or decisions, it's because she feels like you're not that reliable. And mm -hmm. she feels like she's had to hold it down for so long by herself. So she's like have gotten used to like, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. And it sucks for the man that when you do want to kind of step up, your woman already kind of looks at you in a way of like, you know, she has to have it. You know, it always feels like she's more mothery, you know, t t with him. And I think they love each other. I hope they make it. I really, really do um, for the sake of their family. And I, I, I also will commend him because that was an honest answer to give. And mm -hmm. I might add, I mean, I had very brief experience of marriage, but I do know that sometimes there's going to be patches in your relationship where you don't feel like it's love that's keeping you there. You do feel like it is my word and my commitment. And I have to commend someone that actually sticks by a commitment these days when the butterflies are not there, when that mm. person has your goddamn nerves. I think that is the true test of a marriage. Not when things are easy, but when you don't like, like the person you're with right now, but you are committed. So I think that says a lot about their emotional maturity, both of them to, you know, hear that and be able to kind of stick in it. But I will say, uh, dating an alpha female, fellas, people say they want it, but it's just like when women say they want an alpha male, that comes with things. They're too busy for you. You're not going to feel the same attention. You're going to feel like sometimes a lack of affection. That definitely happens. But if you don't want your woman to be that alpha, you got to be that alpha and take so, some of that lead up for her. So let, let me ask, ask this, this question. Oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Let, let me ask this question because I'm, I'm kind of on the fence on this. So 
if I hear the two of you correctly, say, for instance, say it wasn't an egg. Say if her sister needed a kidney. Say if her sister needed a, you know, a blood transfusion because her blood matches her blood. Are you saying that she has to ask her husband for it for, you know, an OK to give the blood or to give the kidney? Is that no, what the I, two of you are saying? No, no, not that. I think I think uh, I think that's that's understandable. Um, because in certain situations, I feel like, you know, that's who you will want to be able to do it because that's the closest to you and kin. But bringing in a child and then having to explain that later or having to now see your seed be raised up as if it's not yours when you secretly know, like, that's my kid over there. I just think that's the issue. You mm -hmm. know, I don't want him. I feel like he's like, that's still our kid. She's carrying it, but that's our kid. Well, it's not his. Is it? Is it his? Is it his sperm that he's donating oh. to? Is no. it his sperm? <laughs> yeah, I, and it's her, I, I, it's her I, egg. But is it his sperm? I don't think it's his egg. I don't think it's his sperm. I will say this. No, I, I hear you. Al. I don't think she needs to ask for permission. I'm not saying that. I'm saying she should just discuss it. Like you know, I remember one time my ex bought a car without discussing mm. with me, and it really hurt my feelings that I'm not one, at the forefront mm. of who you would think to share that with. You didn't have to ask me for permission to get a car. It's still your life. You still operate how you would operate. But I would like to be considered, like you know, just like, uh, just like I want to know how your day was. I want to know if you're going to make a major decision, like, hey, I'm thinking about getting my sister, sister egg, or you know, I'm buying a car. Just not for permission wise, but just include me because when you stop including your partner in those kind of in decisions, I think you're operating like two separate people, not a unit. Right. So she. So and uh, see, I'm not watching it. I'm not watching the the uh, episodes or whatever. So did she not ask her husband? Did she not tell him about the fact that she wanted to donate her egg to her sister because her sister for years has been trying to have kids? No, she did, and they. It was. It was even a fallout because. The sister, he was very adamant about not wanting it to go down. And she's like, it's going to happen. Like, this is my oh, sister. The God, sister was okay. like, so it was like, it was it was almost feeling like whether he wanted it or not, she was going to do it for her sister, you know? So her God, mind okay. was already made. So it's kind of like, well, you know what? I don't ever get to make a decision around here. And I think, you know, I think the I think the relationship is pretty much done because I think once you get a woman to that place where they feel like they they run the relationship or they look at you like you're no longer the man, they're going to continue to walk all over you and you're just going to end up leaving mm -hmm. anyway. They're not going to respect you. She does not respect him as the man because she's had to do it for so long on, on her own. So at this point, the relationship was over once he went to jail. They just didn't know it. It is oh, hard. I don't think I like that. It is hard. When you do that. <laughs> I'm more hopeful. <laughs> you want to feel like that. Like you don't just get to be the leader because you have a penis. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the mannerism. Yeah. It's, it's how you hold it down. It's feeling safe with other things where mm -hmm. a, a woman that doesn't get really into her masculine energy until there's a lack of it in her life. Then she feels like she has to do things. Mm -hmm. We're not raised to start off like that. We become that. And I just wish that when they put that on black women, especially a lot of times we've been left, our dad's not around. And then with the men in our lives. So you adapt this masculine. I got it. I got it. And it's hard to turn it off, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like you're on survival mode. We don't have the luxury to be soft a lot of times and we want it. Trust me. I, I, it, I don't want to be alpha. I want to just chill. Let you be alpha. You know, you got it. You got it. You take care of it. All right. Michael Eric Dyson's recent post is getting mixed reviews on social media after he shared two headlines that cover this, the love story between Simone Biles and her husband, Jonathan Owens and Tra uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Now one headline says, uh, Simon, Simon, Simone Biles husband says he's the catch. And the other headline states, Travis Kelsey reveals he doesn't know how he got so lucky with Taylor Swift. What are your thoughts about the perception of these two posts? And why is it frowned upon when men believe they are the catch in relationships? Al, what do you think? I don't know, but I don't like it. I think when we watched that that podcast and that interview, we knew exactly what he meant. I mean, he wasn't like being like this 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 so chauvinistic type of you know the men are the catch. He was just saying how they met. So I and I don't even like this idea of pin you know putting against each other you know our super black couple versus the super white couple. Mm -hmm. I just didn't like anything about this post. I thought it was immature and I thought it was silly. Um, Mom, what do you think? Yeah, I totally agree, you know, with Al there. And I think that it's unfortunate that black men can't see themselves as a catch. You know, like, it's almost like you damn if you do, you damn if you don't. Like, if you don't see yourself as valuable, then that's a problem. If you see yourself as valuable, that's a problem. Like, 
black men can't win. And I don't think it was a personal dig at her, but I think that, right. you know, to her, your man should be the catch, right? And to him, mm -hmm. he, you know, she should be the catch to him. And I think they're the catch for each other. And I think that that, I think it's fun banter. And he should feel like, yeah, I'm the catch. If the man was, if she was sitting there next to a man and he didn't have that in him, like, yeah, I'm the catch. I'm telling you, that black woman wouldn't like him. Black women want a man with a little arrogance, a little cockiness. Don't nobody want no <laughs> soft man. You walk around, baby, you're just the only catching. Yeah, it was you. What woman wants a soft man like that? You want a man to be like, yeah, you know I got that good. Even if he don't got it all, he he's confident in it. And, you know, he's not no chump, okay? And so I respect him for it. And shout out to the black man knowing that he the catch. We got to right. uplift black men a little bit more. What and I like he, how he put that smile on her face. Yeah, and she had no problem with it. She face. liked it. I, I didn't like it one bit um, because even if you think you're the catch, just saying it on a podcast, it, it gives the impression that you're saying that she was not the catch as opposed to Kelsey. Oh, Tra wow. Travis Kelsey. Hey, I can say my opinion. Travis Kelsey. Uh, we, you know, we know you are a catch. We, we know, we know you're both catches, but it's something very sexy about a man that has it really, really, really going on and not having to say it, not having to say it. I think there's something very powerful in that. And a man not saying it, although he's got to go. When you, I'm telling you, as a woman, how we think. Maybe it's different in the gay community or gay relationships, but with with wow. heterosexual relationships, <laughs> I'm going to say this: when you have a man that has it going on, yet he takes a step back to say, "I don't know how I got so lucky." Whether the public believes it or not, it is a beautiful thing about elevating your woman. It really is. I think it's sexy, and I'm telling you what I think as a straight woman. And I, you know, hey, and what a, a lot of women felt. That's why a lot of women were rubbed by the wrong way. It just made it seem like Travis was elevating his woman and it looked, it felt like, oh boy, was this like, nah, that's me. I know it's mm. not like that if you listen to the whole interview, but we're just Definitely. talking about that one statement. And yes, you can feel good about yourself. It's not saying that, but it's, it just gave a feminine energy to say that. Although I don't think he's feminine. Wow. But the energy. But what mean. if she would have wow. said like, oh, he's the catch. Would that have been a problem? Like, so he can't, no, a man can never it. celebrate his so. No, let her say mm. it. Of course she should say it. Of course she should elevate your man. But when you say it, it just makes <laughs> it whack. Like, I, if I'm in a relationship with a man and I say, I'm the catch, I think it's even whack when I, a woman, I just think it's whack when anyone says it about themselves. I'm the catch. Like, that's, men have it I think, so I think hard. We talk, we talk on this anything. show. All, we talk on this show all the time about not taking one clip, one sentence out of context. You just agreed that when you listened to the whole thing, you understood it. But you're going to ride on this one clip and question his masculinity or sounding. Not what I said. I don't know. That just that to me. Mm, let's keep the same energy across the board. If we're not going to judge this one clip, let's not judge this one clip with this. Now you are the king of that. So I, I no, think I'm the king of doing my uh, research and like. Like I said, I, I listened to the said. whole clip. I listened to the whole clip, and it, that wasn't his intention. Al, I, don't I, take I, it so personally. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about my opinion on what he said. And oh, yeah, I know. I get it. But I'm just saying, woman, I'm just I saying, say, I feel like my, in my opinion, in okay. my opinion, let's not just judge the young man off of that little bit of a clip. Judge it off of the whole thing. Do we do it every day on the show. We judge <laughs> that we are provided. I'm saying as a woman, a lot of women were rubbed the wrong way because just saying it, period. If you listen to what I'm saying, it, we're really not really saying things are far apart. I'm saying mm -hmm. anyone that says I'm the catch is inferring that their partner is not. And I just feel like some things don't have to be said when you know, some things are just understood. No one needs to say that they're the catch. It just sounds arrogant is what my point is. I'm not saying okay. men cannot be celebrated. I'm not saying that. I'm saying just, it just, it, it seems it comes off as a date to a woman. That's all. It's mm -hmm. Coming up, Zendaya gets candid about her acting career. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. 
every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back. All right, fellas, you are not going to believe this next story. Check this out. Hey there, Claudia. It's your girl, Vivica Fox here. Wanted to take a moment to wish you a happy birthday, queen. I love you tons. Have a wonderful, wonderful birthday and stay fabulous. <laughs> oh, she looks so good. I love I you, love girl. It. That's my girl. And we I was able to celebrate her birthday in the Jamaica and we had she does it real big. Thank you so much, my friend. I miss you. I miss talking to you every Monday. And we're gonna get back together in LA and really do a big and nice little reunion. Thank you so much, fellas. Thank you so much, Foxel. And I love you. All right, in honor of my birthday celebration, we are going to play a fun trivia game about yours truly called I'm That Girl. Oh, oh, oh gosh, I feel like I'm gonna lose this one out. You know her more than me. Ah, 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 we'll see. Oh, I know about any of this stuff, y'all. This is, I'm, I'm hearing it as y'all are hearing it. So let's cue the music. First up, what's the name of the pageant that I competed back in 1997? Miss America. Miss America. Miss Rhode Island. Miss Rhode Island. Miss Rhode Island. Miss America. Miss USA. Miss, oh, Miss USA. Oh, I geez. won the state in 96 and I went to nationals in 97. All right, what are the names of my two furry cats? Sniffles and Shelly, Fuzzy and Lovey, Shelly and Six. Shelly and Six. Yes, Shelly and Six. Who was my co-star in the film Dear Frank? Ryan White, Christian Keys, or Tyrese? Christian Keys? Al, what'd you say? Brian White. Brian White, he killed okay. it. Go watch that movie, he was very good. What's the name of my best friend who is an actress that lives in Los Angeles? Taylor Owens and Alonza Tatiana Ali. B. Tatiana Annie. Ali, I have no idea. Tatiana it's Ali. Annie Alonza. I knew that. Yeah, okay. That's my girl. Which artist never featured me in his music video? Joe, Charlie Wilson, or Cisco? Charlie Wilson. Charlie Wilson. No, I was in Charlie Let's Wilson. Go. I was in Joe. And actually, I was in a, a, a Drew Hill video. So I was with I, all of them. All right. Name the two game shows I worked on back in the day. Hey. hey. No, deal, no deal. The price is right. Yes, yes. And that is. All right. That was fun. Thank you, guys. That was good. <laughs> Thank you, production. That was really cute. All right. Switching gears. Another that girl, Zendaya, recently shared her regrets about being thrust into the lifestyle of an actor and wished that she was going, she went straight to school and said, Zendaya said, I felt like I was thrust into a very adult position. I was becoming the breadwinner of my family very early. And there was a lot of role reversal happening and just kind of becoming grown, really. What are your thoughts? And can you guys relate? Al, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. You know, we talk about this on the show before that, you know, a child star syndrome is what this is. And she's basically saying what a lot of them have said. I like the fact that she opened up 
and I like the fact that a lot of people can say, look, you're worth $22 million. Why are you complaining? It's not necessarily complaining. It's just her sharing her feelings. And I think it's okay for her to share her feelings because I'm sure there's a lot that she has to process in growing up so soon and being responsible for her entire family while she was still, you know, going through her adolescence. So I like the fact to hear, I like hearing these type of conversations from people like Zendaya. Okay, Armand, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. And I empathize with her a lot. You know, like when I was younger, I well, now, I used to feel like I want to be famous. I want to be a star. And now, you know, looking back and hearing these stories, I'm so happy I was able to be a kid and like go outside and go to sleepovers and not really have a care in the world, you know. And now that I'm older, I, I feel like I have a, a more mature head on my shoulders to now be thrusted into the entertainment business. But to try to take that on as a child, I see why so many people end up going crazy. So, you know, and it's nothing wrong with her feeling that way because she's saying now, now she wants to kind of feel like a kid. You need that. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You know, being a child, you never get that back. You know, I don't, I, it doesn't matter if she's worth $22 million or $100 million. You never get your innocence back as a child. And, you know, I'm appreciative that I've actually been able to have that. So I understand how she feels you know and i empathize with her for that yeah i think that's really sad that you know it's like you have to sacrifice so much to be that successful you know it's like on one hand okay well do you want it well the opportunity is here right now you got to take it and there's no time for that other stuff i do feel like that is a big part of your development as a, a, a well-adjusted human being have a really as, as normal as you could or yeah. at least have a childhood period yeah you know, we don't we we think selfishly about these celebrities. We want them more of them and, and their work, but they do miss out on a lot by sacrificing. All right, get into this twisted story. A Texas woman shared that she was misdiagnosed with a rare aggressive form of blood vessel cancer after a checkup session following her spleen surgery. Lisa Monk stated that the doctor told her that she had 15 months to live and ordered her to go into chemotherapy. But after another routine visit, Lisa was told that she never had cancer and that our pathology results were incorrect. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, do you think, well, well, of course she should sue. Should she sue? And how much should she sue them for, Al? What do you think? Oh, that's just so crazy. But you know what? This is more common than we know. And this is why just across the board, we should get second and third opinions. Because think, it, you know, she's mentally thinking she's going to die. She's physically going through this extreme chemo treatment. So physically, she's going through it. And then emotionally, they say to you that you have less than a year to live. Can you imagine getting all that news at one time? I say that they need to investigate the doctor. They need to investigate the hospital, the, the clinic, investigate everybody, including the insurance companies. Because, you know, nowadays we know that doctors bill like this so that they can make more money. I, I, I sue them all. Sue them all, because I just think that's unfair emotionally, mentally, and physically on the on the on the um, patient. All right. I'm to on... add to that really quick, I just think it's sad that they're making this woman pay her medical bill still. Like she's still having to pay for this. So even if you know they made the mistake, it, they could have at least covered all the costs. You know, so I think she should at least get that covered. You know, because this woman is going to be traumatized for the rest of her life. I will be traumatized every time I go to the doctor. Yeah. Well, she definitely has a case for some major damages. Not only they're still having to pay for a service she never needed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, she definitely can make a really fantastic argument, a strong well, argument. Well, this is the UK, though, right? I think their healthcare. In, mm, I think UK's healthcare is free, right? I don't know, or is it Canada? I can't remember. Anyway, well, go ahead. Take the expenses out of it. She has a case for punitive damages. Yeah. She probably has a case for mental distress and depression and all that. And imagine how reckless you'd be, right? If you were told, hey, you only got a year left. You'd be like, all right, I'm not going to take my meds anymore. I'm not going to work out. I'm, I'm, I don't care. Mm. Some people might take that kind of attitude and do really reckless things, maybe financially, not really planning. Mm, like true. Stuff. Maybe like turning down a potential relationship because of... Well, I'm not going to be around. Like, think about the right. stress and trauma that her family probably went through. How depressing that had to be. Mm. Yeah, she's just suing for a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money. Ugh, can you imagine? All right. Um. Again, I, I think I asked you guys what you guys got planned for the weekend, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Universal and hanging out. All right. All right. So well, what you about to do next? I'm going um, back outside, and uh, I, I think that's a plan. Like, How they, are the men in the Bahamas? Child, I don't know about them. I don't do I don't do on location quick hookups. I'm looking for the real thing. That's Wait, so you on your birthday? You're not gonna have no birthday whoopee? No, I haven't had sex all in 2024. So no, no. 
Oh my what I do God. is going to be epic and he better be in shape. He better be hydrated. He better have coconut oil. He better be ready to go because it's What's the be... coconut oil for? If you have to ask, Al. I don't know. Seriously. What's the... <laughs> Armand, Armand, what's the I coconut don't know. oil this, this must be some straight woman stuff because I know coconut straight woman for... Yeah, what is it? What do you use the coconut oil for? Stay out of my business. It makes things slippery. All right. I want to stay out of my... her pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Street Flavor. Have a great weekend. And thanks for all the birthday wishes. Thank you, Fox. So appreciate it. Great show, y'all. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, absolutely. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you.